Joining me the High Commissioner of India to Canada, Mr. Sanjay Kumar Verma. Thank you for joining me, His Excellency. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. My viewers, I would like to know about the future of India-Canada relations. People from both countries are witnessing the lowest point in their relationships since Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has leveled allegations about a possible link of India in killing of Hardeep Singh Nijar. A series of cold relations has been witnessed since then, but now we can see a sort of beginning of normalcy in diplomatic relationships between both countries. India has restored visa services for Canadians. How do you see Canada-India relations going forward? Thank you very much. This is one of very timely questions. Uh, as we have always said that uh, India is always ready to look into any specific and relevant information shared by our Canadian friends and take it forward in a logical way, which is legally defendable in both the countries. India and Canada has a long friendship. This is one off incident wherein we are seeing a divergence in our views and divergence in our approach. So rather than talking of, about divergences, if we just look at the convergences that two of our great countries have, they will be the right way to take things forward. And I see a lot of convergences which are already existing. There are various mechanisms which are available for both of us to take these convergences forward. Uh, let's, let's talk about, for example, trade. Trade is an issue which is absolutely separate from what uh, is being discussed in the media between our two countries as one of the dividers. Trade is a convergent. Trade is something which brings us together. And I would suggest that our friends, uh, both in the Indo-Canadian communities and in the Canadian communities, uh, wider Canadian community, to take the advantage of uh, the current economic growth of India, current innovative growth of India, and do the trade in the way that will be beneficial to both of us. If you look at the investment, most of the Canadian investors have invested in India over a long time. It's a long term investments in roads, in airports, in infrastructure. So therefore, there are foundations, there are fundamentals which are strong enough for us to do investment related business. And I do not see that those fundamentals have differed in any way over the last few months. If you look at the innovations, both of us are having great pride in our innovative ecosystems. Innovators do talk to each other. Innovators do look forward to develop new products, combining their innovations. We would urge them to continue working in this direction. Look at agriculture. Canada is a G7 country, so therefore, of course, it's an industrialized country, but still it is an agricultural economy. And it does have done agricultural trade with India over a long, long period of time. There is no reason to restrict the urge of continuing that trade. You look at technology, it's the same. So I'm just naming a few of them. If you look people to people, we have a very large Indian diaspora in Canada and it is going to grow in the future. So people to people relationship, which is a foundational stone for many other relationships to grow are still there. And this relationship would be able to take us forward in whichever positive direction we want to move ahead. So in brief, there are a lot of convergences which are existing. Platforms do exist. I will urge your viewers to take the positive stories forward, write narratives which are beneficial to both our countries. So despite the political optics and rhetoric, are both countries working diplomatically in terms of resolving issues are still a deadlock in this regard? Uh, no, there's no deadlock. And uh, let me assure your viewers that uh, at uh, the diplomatic level, the conversation continues. And the only way in which we can narrow the divergence or narrow the divide is to look at the dialogue and diplomacy. 
And these are the two major elements of any international policy of India, wherein we would like to engage more and more, have more conversations and not less. And through those conversations, we are sure that we will reach a conclusion which both the countries will be proud of. You have said in your interview with CTV News very recently that, quote, if there is anything specific and relevant regarding PM Trudeau's allegations and communicated to us, we will look into it, unquote. Is India looking into Canada's concerns? Absolutely. Uh, no international relation could be, uh, could be solid without understanding each other's concerns. And therefore, what I said earlier was the dialogue and diplomacy are important elements in order to understand each other's concerns and do things with mutual respect demonstrated to each other. Uh, as far as the current narrative is concerned, what I see a lot in the Canadian media, which I'm very sorry to see, is that India does not cooperate. India is only asking for specific and relevant information so that we can help you. We can help the Canadian investigators to reach their conclusion. Their conclusion to the extent that it will be viable for them to go for the legal action. So therefore, once again, through your channel, I would urge my Canadian friends, colleagues, they are great friends of ours, uh, to share any specific and relevant information there are channels which are already delineated uh, uh, assigned for such information to be shared and i can guarantee them i can assure them that we will certainly look into them so is canada looking into india's concerns in terms of curbing glorification of terrorism against india on canadian soil and how seriously Canada dealing with death threats against Indian diplomats such as yourself? Uh, we, have, we have voiced our concerns on various occasions and not only today uh, uh, from uh, through our historical relationship which we have here. Uh, I believe that there is uh, uh, understanding of our concern in the Canadian uh, uh, policy making circles, decision making circles. Uh, I have seen many statements coming from the Canadian leadership uh, uh, respecting Indian sovereignty and territorial integrity, and I have no doubt about it. Uh, we need to see more on the ground, and uh, uh, through the dialogue, I'm sure we'll be able to uh, see that convergence on the ground as well, and uh, we'll see uh, uh, any semblance of use of Canadian soil by Canadian citizens to target and challenge. Indian sovereignty and Indian territorial integrity failing uh, with the help of, of course, our host government. As far as the threats are concerned, they are illegal. These threats are deplorable. And these threats are against me and my colleagues who are just going around trying to strengthen the bilateral relations. Therefore, everyone will need to understand that such illegal threats will need to be called out. Legal actions will need to be taken by my host government. And I can assure you that once there is a positive development in that respect, I'm sure that such incidents in the future will subside. Uh, and the final point on this is that if I want something good to be done to me, I will not do bad to others. And that is my litmus test that everyone should ask to himself or herself that what I am doing to others, if others do the same to me, will I accept that? Will I not be pained? Sir, Canada is a home to about over 1.5 million Indo-Canadians and more than half million Indian students. What do you hear from them regarding their challenges during the ongoing row between both countries? Uh, they feel very frustrated and rightly so. They, they chose uh, Canada as, uh, uh, as their home for obvious reasons. It's a peaceful country. 
which is a country which is respectful to various cultures. So they chose this country. Unfortunately, a very, very little handful of elements have been threatening their way of life. Their way of life is just to practice their faith, just to go along doing what they came here for. They are teachers, they are doctors, they are, they are lawyers, they are engineers. They just want to do, conduct their profession. And if this very professions, very faith, very practice of their religion uh, is being threatened, uh, there is an issue. So I can see why they are frustrated. And I'm sure they must be airing these views through their own channels because they are Canadian citizens. And to them, there are various channels available to voice their concerns. And through that, they will take it forward. Uh, my, my advice to them is that please do everything that you can do for both your country of origin and country that you have adopted. Canada is your karma bhumi. Canada is your adopted country. So please do everything you can do for Canada. But at the same time, my request will be to keep the perspective of a better Canada-India relationship uh, in purview so that you are able to do good to both the countries, your country of origin, as well as the country that you have adopted. How could a huge Indo-Canadian diaspora help be restoring ties between both nations? Oh, they, 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 are, they are the pillars. When I look at them and when I, when I look at the last count of all the Indo-Canadians present in Canada and uh, Indian nationals, they are close to about 2.3 million. And each of them is a pillar. These pillars would very clearly be able to demonstrate what India is all about. So please go out and sensitize your neighbors, your friends who do not know about India, about India of today. Sensitize them of our multiculturalism. Sensitize them of our Vasudhav Kutumbakam. We want everyone to be friends with India. We want to be Vishwamitra. We want to be a friend of the globe. We want to be there in building confidence amongst those who are warring today. So be confidence builders yourself. So if you are able to do these tasks, I'm sure you'll be doing a lot of good to both your country of origin as well as the country that you have adopted and take forward and strengthen the bilateral relations between India and Canada. So you earlier mentioned about the need of restoring business ties uh, between both countries. What is India doing in terms of restoring business ties with Canada? And what should Canada do for normalcy in trade, in your opinion, sir? See, India is open to business. Uh, it uh, keeps us uh, welcome for Canadian business people to travel to India all the time. Uh, this was demonstrated through opening of business visa uh, uh, for Canadian nationals to travel to India. Uh, and it was not only through the regular business visa, we also opened it up through e-visa so that it is easier for them uh, to get the visa sitting in their own home. Uh, this was not done because of any reciprocity with Canada. This was done as a goodwill gesture from India. So we do welcome all our Canadian traders, investors, innovators, uh, uh, science and technology partners to come to India and try to see a joint future, a future which will be beneficial for both of us. We would facilitate various missions if Canada decides to take business and trade missions to India. We would facilitate their meetings with the right partners in India and we would all, always facilitate them in doing business with India. India has never brought uh, any regulatory hurdle for Canadian businesses to do business in India. In fact, we have facilitated the Canadian businesses sometimes over and above our other business relations. So to those friends who are in the trade and investment uh, seg sector domains of uh, Canada, please feel free to visit India. We welcome you with our open arms. We would facilitate your visit and we would love to see further development and growth in our business and trade ties. And what should Canada do for normalcy in trade? Uh, I, would, I would urge the Canadian authorities to look at restarting sending Canadian business delegations to India because that is the fulcrum. 
unless the business people meet with each other, business cannot be done. They may have concerns, they may have modalities to follow, they may have legal issues to talk about, they may have joint ventures to be talked about. So my suggestion would be to restart the business delegations going from Canada to India uh, at national or sub-national level. Very, most of the provinces in Canada, they are very much interested in taking their own business delegations and we welcome them with our open heart. Uh, they should come there, they should see India, they should meet their Indian business partners and take the relationship to its logical conclusion. How do you see current political environment in Canada helping to resolving issues between both countries? You know, being a diplomat of 36 years in this profession, I'm a perennial optimist. And uh, I have excellent interlocutors, excellent friends in the Canadian system, uh, both at the political level and executive level. They have similar feelings. So I'm sure both of us will work together to see the conclusion of what divides us and move forward towards what unites us. So finally, my viewers would like to know what does Indian government expect from Canada in terms of moving forward our normal relations with India? We only urge, we only request our Canadian friends to con look at our concern. And our concern is very simple. Please don't allow your soil to be used by your citizens for, against the territorial integrity and sovereignty of uh, your friend, India. We are a friendly country. And I don't want to go through the legality of that. There are UN provisions in that respect. Uh, uh, international law, various clauses of international, various international laws are there. But again, I'll, I'll just, just urge, request uh, uh, with full respect that please, please, please do not allow your soil to be used by your citizens to target Indian sovereignty and territorial integrity. It's not in the interest of either of us. And I'm sure no country in the world would like to see their own sovereignty and territorial integrity challenged and targeted by a bunch of other peoples in the countries outside their geography. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. High Commissioner, for joining me today, please. Thank you very much. And I wish you all the best for Guru Parva, Guru Nanak's uh, Jayanti today as well as Kartik Purnima, which is also a symbol to bring us from darkness to light. May all of us succeed. Thank you very much. You just heard India's High Commissioner to Canada, Mr. Sanjay Kumar Verma. He reflected on the future of India-Canada relationships. Please subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel. You can also donate us by clicking donate button on our YouTube channel. Download Tag TV apps on Apple, Android, Rocco and Amazon Fire. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.